Hello, my lawyer readers, this is iStark7777 with another fanfiction reading. As always, a link to the story will be in the description. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the, sec in the comment section for your thoughts on the story. And if you want a later, if you want a fanfiction reading or review later in the in the future. I think I worded that right. I don't know. I kept I have, <laughs> this is like the fourth time today trying to do this video. Kinda sucks having to constantly take one take of every single review because I have no idea how to edit. So it's like high risk, high reward. Either you do it one take or you don't do it at all. Uh, I'd rather take that risk. So the reading I <laughs> the story I'm re doing a reading on is called Bell and a Bear. Oi! It's by newbie novelist R. D. It's, I kid you not, it's a Beauty and the Beast and Winnie the Pooh crossover. So what I get for doing a, deciding to do the re readings and reviews on a roulette wheel, nobody's recommending any stories. So, the synopsis for the story is Belle finds an enchanted book in the library. When she opens it, she is whisked away to the hundred acre woods and meets a silly old bear. Okay. It's only like 2,000 words, so let's get started. Belle was in the castle library, and she wasn't in a good mood. She had the beast, you know, she and the beast had an argument from one of, Be from one of Beast's temper tantrums and hadn't spoken to each other for a while. The beast locked himself up in the west wing while Belle tried to escape her troubles through the many books in the library. Mrs. Potts and Chips rolled beside Belle in the tea cart. Oh, you're all right, dear. Fine, Belle sighed. Just fine. You don't sound fine, Chip said, concerned. I, I know, it's just... Why can't the beast control himself? Who raised him anyway? I know he's a beast, but there is, but that's no excuse for acting like one. Is this, like, before he turns human? Because I, I, never, I never understood why, when it came to, like, later media involving Beauty and the Beast, unless it was a retread of the movies, like, okay... The curse is lifted. Everyone's human, and Beast is human, too. So, okay, yeah, all later media is like, Beast is still a beast. Oh, hey, Kingdom Hearts, I can kind of get that, because, again, it was retreading the movie. It's just with more, with 20% more Zolden. <laughs> but it's like, the other movies, the whole TV Christmas special thing, I don't know. It's just, why keep making them into beasts when it's like, at the end of the movie, they're like human. They, they, the curse is left. Why keep, why burn them, why put them back? I, I don't know. I find it weird. So let's, <laughs> let me continue. As she complained, Belle picked up a book from one of the shelves. When she saw it, a puzzling look came to her face. What's wrong? asked Chip. It's this book. Belle finally spoke. She was confused by the title. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Belle opened the book to page one. The page was blank, but then the page started to glow. Belle gasped in surprise. The book glowed brighter, and Belle was sucked inside. Belle! Miss Putt screamed. Mama! What's happening? squealed Chip. The book fell to the polished floor. Belle was gone. Mrs. Putt and Chip gasped in absolute shock. Belle opened her eyes to see what happened. She was breathless as she found herself in a beautiful forest in the middle of summer. What? Where am I? Belle stood up on the warm grass. The wood she was in was so lush and radiant. Was she inside the book? Think, 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 think. Belle, he Belle heard a soft voice not too far away. Maybe someone here can help her. Belle walked up a hill and spotted a, bo a bear sitting on a log. But it didn't look like a normal bear. He reminded Belle of a stuffed toy. He was small and tubby with yellow fur wearing a red shirt. This particular bear was the one thinking. Think, 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 think. Belle approached the cute little bear. Excuse me. Hmm? The bear looked up at the lady. Oh, hello, who are you? Think, think, think. <laughs> I'm Belle. Who are you? I'm Winnie the Pooh. Pooh for short. Pooh. <laughs> Poor out of the luck. <laughs> One, one grammar error, that's just funny. It said, I'm Winnie the Pooh. 
poor for sure. <laughs> oh, that's just that made my day right now. <laughs> uh, oh, but that's still a grammar error. <laughs> poor hopped off the log. Do you happen to know how to play poo sticks by myself? Poo sticks? Yes. It's a game we play at the bridge, but all my friends are busy with other things. So I'm just trying to think of how to play poo sticks by myself. Um, I can play if you want, they'll offer. Oh, would you poo's ears pick, perked up? Peaked up? Peaked up. Poo's ears peaked up. No, I'm calling I'm calling that a grammar. Do do grandma it is. Ah, ah, ah. It should be perked up. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Thank you, Belle. He hopped off the log and took Belle's hand. Follow me. Waddle, 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 waddle. Because I like, I, I remember how, I, I remember watching Winnie the Pooh in the past. I loved Winnie the Pooh when I was a kid. Uh, my mom actually had all these old school, like, Winnie the Pooh VHSs. Of, like, when the first, when the show came out, she showed me, like, all these pictures of Winnie the Pooh. My mom was a, hu my mom was a huge fan of Winnie the Pooh. She loved Winnie the Pooh. Uh, when I was growing up, she always watched it with me. Despite the fact that she was a manager at Target, she she couldn't get enough Winnie the Pooh. Um, I know it's kind of weird with an adult loving Winnie the Pooh, but then, then again, My Little Pony is mostly <laughs> fan base is mostly of adult men, so it's not surprising. Um, where where did I leave off? Oh, okay, okay, here I am. As Pooh took Belle to the bridge, Belle decided to get to know about this beautiful land. So, what exactly is this place, Pooh? This is the Hundred Acre Wood, said Pooh. It's where me and all my friends play together, take walks, and have fun adventures. He chuckled, like that one time we were chasing a heffalump. Belle laughed at the silly word. A what? A heffalump. We took a huge pit to capture the heffalump, and it worked. And for all of you who don't who don't know, I guess the lore of Winnie the Pooh, the Heffalump was was an imaginary creature that they made up until they literally made a movie showing the Heffalump. Oh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm literally not joking. Just imagine like a. It's been a while since I've seen um, that movie, so I don't I can't remember what Heffalump actually looks like. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. Uh, you caught it? Put Pooh shook his head. No, I didn't catch, catch the heffalump because I was the heffalump. Belle raised her brow. Pardon? You see, while everyone was searching for the heffalump, I decided a smuckle of honey would help me search better. <laughs> I can't do poo for my life. Whoever did the original poo had to have been amazing with the voice act, with the voice. But the honey pot got stuck on my head. And I ended up falling into the pit. <laughs> poo. Poor. <laughs> Damn it. Poor strikes again. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, three. <laughs> three, Grandma. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I love when, I love a good grammar error, especially if it's somewhat hilarious. I forget how much I look like a heffalump with a honeypot stuck in my head. <laughs> Belle laughed. It was such a silly story, but it was adorable the way Pooh told, told it. That's some story, Pooh. Oh, yes. Here we are. Pooh and Belle came up on to, upon the bridge. He grabbed two nearby sticks. This could be your stick, Belle. Thank you. So, how do you play poo sticks? It's very simple. Pooh stood on the edge of the bridge. You take your poo stick and throw it into the water. Pooh did so and then ran to the other side. And whoever stick makes it up first is the winner. He paused. Oh, bother. <laughs> What's wrong, Asbel? I just lost my poo stick. Kinda of funny. He sulked. It was such a nice stick, too. Oh, Pooh, your naivety. Belle patted the bear's head. It's okay, Pooh. We'll find you a new Pooh stick, and this time we'll play together. Pooh smiled. Thank you, Belle. Once they found another stick for Pooh, Belle began playing her very first game of Pooh sticks, and she had to admit it was fun. It was such a sweet, simple game. As as they played, Pooh told more of his funny adventures, making Belle laugh and laugh. Time flew by as they played because sundown had arrived. Pooh saw the sun setting. Oh my, it's getting late. He heard his tummy growling. Time for dinner. Would you like to join me for dinner, Belle? Well, that's very kind of you, but I have to go back to the castle. And I don't know how to get back there. Before she could continue, a blue or orange and black tackled to the bell to the ground. Ooh oh, I hate Tigger. Sorry, it's just... I, 
never been fond of Tigger. Bell saw what looked like a friendly tiger sitting a Hey there, the name is Tigger. T-I double. Double go, go, yar, that spells Tigger. His voice was exuberant and joyful. Who are you? I've never seen you before. Hello, Tigger, Pooh greeted. You just bumps my new film, friend Bell. Oh, well, I'm glad to meet you, Miss Bell. Why did I start giving Tigger a random Scottish accent? I don't know where. Tigger held Bell up and shook her hand. Welcome to the Hungry Acre Woods. Bell was truly warned by the gracious inhabitants of this enchanted forest. Thank you. Pleased to meet you, Tigger. Say, Pooh, how about you and your new friend come over a sleepover? All of our new friends are with. All of our friends are waiting. Why, well, yes, Tigger, we'd love to. Pooh turned to Bell. Maybe our friends can help you find a way to your castle. You think so? Oh, yes, Pooh nodded. Things always go well when we're together. That's what we do. That's what friends do for each other. Bell couldn't agree more. She decided to go with her new friends. At Tigger's treehouse, Belle was introduced to the rest of Pooh's friends, Piglet, Rabbit, Eeyore, Owl, Kanga, and Roo. Pooh told how he taught Belle to play Pooh sticks, and I told Belle so many of my adventures, but now it's her turn to tell a story. It is? Yes, you said something about a castle. I would love to hear about it. Ooh, I want to hear it too, Roo said, bouncing up and down. Me too, me too. Stories with Tiggle tassels are what Tiggers do best, like best. Damn it, I almost, I almost said do best. But I'm used to him saying that instead of like best. Well, how can I say no to that? Belle smi said, smiling. Okay, here's my story. Belle took a seat on, on an old, old armchair. You see, not too long ago, I was living in a quiet little village with my father. One day, my father left to go to a science fair, but when our horse, Philip, came back without my father, I knew something was wrong. All the Hungry Acre friends listened intently. So I rode Philip, and he brought me to where my father's was. Locked up in a huge castle. He was taken prisoner by a... Bow! A deep, mighty voice boomed. Pooh and his friends began to panic. Piglet ran and jumped into Belle's lap. What was that? It sounded like a huffle up in a bad mood, Tigger said. Or it could be a woozle. Or Jaguar. Jag... Jaguar? Is that a real thing in, in Pooh? I don't know. Oh! Where are you? The voice roared again. Yep, definitely a jaguar. Oh my goodness, the jaguar is after Belle, Rabbit said. We have to protect her. The four of his friends took Belle and placed her in the corner of the room. Then they stacked piles of books, toys, clothes, and all feathers of brick and brick to create a wall around her. <laughs> I, I can just picture that. Switch! Quick, we must protect her! We built a wall out of toys and books. Wait, it's not completed. <laughs> Fear not, Miss Bell, Owl saluted. We shall ensure your safety. That jacul that jacular will think twice when he shows up, said Tigger. Armed with a plunger and a pot on his head. Pooh boy, you and I will stand guard. Pooh put an, an empty honey pot on his head and held up the pot his pop gun. Ay ay, Tigger. Tigger. And so Pooh and Tigger descended from Tigger's treehouse to keep watch for the jacular. Keep your eyes peeled, Pooh. The jugular could be anywhere. Tigger said, looking back and forth. What do you know? The what do you suppose the jugular wants with Bell? Pooh wondered. Who knows? What do we know? What we do? What do we know is that we have. We need to keep Miss Bell safe. Tigger said. So watch your back. Pooh was confused as to why he should watch his own back, but he looked over his shoulder to watch it. He couldn't. He couldn't see his back, but he saw something else. Uh, Tigger. How big are jugulars? Why, they're tall as trees, Pooh Boy. Tigger answered, keeping watch the opposite direction. Are they furry and have sharp teeth? Pooh gulped. Absolutely, positively. Then I think I found one, Pooh exclaimed. Tigger spun around and, and creeping towards him was the jacular. Where is Belle? The creature roared. The Pooh and Tigger screamed and scurried back to the treehouse. They used a dresser to barricade the door. The jugular is outside, Tigger screamed. It's coming for Bell. Boom, boom. <laughs> Heavy banging was hitting the door. That's not going to hold him, Rabbit said. We have to. The door was knocked down, and the massive jugular stormed into the house. It's a jugular! Roar! God. Oh, God. Bell knew with that roar. She looked and saw it wasn't a jugular. It was the beast. What's up? What a monster, oh, Owl gasped. He's huge, Rue said. Beast! Bell knocked down the wall of junk and ran to him. He's like, I need to knock down this wall. Mama. <laughs> Bell, 
Bell, the beast, embraced Bell in his arms. Pooh and his friends couldn't believe their eyes. The jaguar was hugging Bell. Are you all right, Bell? Beast asked, gently putting his paw on her cheek. I'm just fine. Bell smiled. My new friends took care of me. He brought the beast over to her trembling friend. Everyone, I'd like you to meet the beast. He's the, well, he's the one who let me live in his castle after released my father from the castle. That that kind that kind of sounds kind of weird. He's the one who let me live in his castle after he released my father from the castle. Now that I think about it, it kind of it kind of sounds weird, but fitting. I don't know. He has been very good at, to me. Oh. Oh my, so you're Belle's friend too. Pooh was very relieved. How wonderful. Thank goodness for that, Tigger said. We thought you were a jaguar coming to get Miss Belle. The beast, the beast arched an extra fuzzy eyebrow. A what? Belle giggled, just a made-up monster. That's what they said about heffalumps. But they are all very brave protecting me. Of course, that's what friends are for, said Pooh. The beast smiled. Well, thank you for protecting Belle and taking care of her. You're welcome, Pooh said. Have you come to take Belle back to the castle, Mr. Beach? Mr. Beast? Oh, God, I actually screwed up myself. <laughs> Mrs. Beast, uh. The Beast nodded. Yes. Pooh, Belle gave Pooh a hug. Goodbye, Pooh. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Belle, Pooh said, hugging Belle. You can visit us whenever you like. Yeah, visit us and we'll miss you. Take care. Don't be strangers. Belle and Beast said their goodbyes and left Tigger's house. As they walked, a light shined and they were back in the castle library. Beast held the enchanted book in her hands. What a wonderful story. Belle said the Beast, I'm sorry for my behavior earlier. Please forgive me. I promise to control my temper better. Of course I forgive you, Belle hugged him. Why don't we go outside and play poo sticks? Uh, poo sticks? Belle took his paw. I'll show you how to play. Belle went out and showed the Beast how to play poo sticks. Even the Beast agreed it was such a fun, easy game. It was such a magical day for Belle. To see a new world and be reunited with her beloved beast. She truly was living in a magnificent world. Okay. So what do I think of this story? Um. Honestly, I don't like it. I mean, I think it's a good idea. But I think, honestly, and this is my honest opinion. No, no insult to the author or anything. But it very much reads like a children's novel. It very much reads like something you would see. You would It very much reads like something you, you, you would give to like a four or five year old little child. Which makes sense. It's a K plus rating. That's what that's what the rating set is on there. Um it's a adventure friendship. I I I, I mean the friendship, okay, it's a perfect little friendship little do do tiny story. But where's the there's no adventure. Why is that tag there? Why it should just it should get the author should just um not even make a K plus just make it K get rid of the K plus switch it with a K rating because it's a complete and utter children's story it does it doesn't need the plus uh it doesn't need the adventure tag it should just stay a uh, friendship tag because it's a tiny it's there's no adventure inside oh here's how to play poo sticks uh I wouldn't recommend this story unless unless you were like a unless you were a kid unless you are a tiny kid who reads these kind of stories all the time like so or something a parent might want to read to a kid if you're a teenager or an adult who likes to uh, sort of thought provoking stories make a hard pass on the story but if you if you're a parent who wants to read your own son or daughter something interesting or even better or something like a little brother I mean older brother to a younger brother and they're like they don't know how books are written and how characters eh, just want to listen to a nice very simple very plain story then give this story a shot but it doesn't need the rating it doesn't need the adventure tag and it honestly it's it's long enough i mean when it comes to these kid stories, I mean, the shorter the better because, you know, they don't have great attention spans. So I think the amount of words, I mean, the amount of words is 2,109 words. And I think for, like, an actual thought, for, like, an actual regular one-shot, it's it would be kind of too short. But 
the with the way it's written and the way it's structured, it very much reads like a tiny kid story. And I I would have to give Kuda I would have to give a thank you for to the author for actually making a very an actual fan fiction children's book. It's a good idea. I mean who I mean it, you don't have to have these outrageous uh, thought-provoking stories every single time, every single review, every single reading. Sometimes you just want to write, read a simple story, uh, but it's too simple, and the and the uh, the story is structured too much for anyone who over the age of turn, over the age of six, seven, to want to even be bothered reading it. Hence, why I said it. I said. Any, anyone who, who's old enough to not really bother story, it's it's not for you. But if you want someone to read to, like a little kid, or if you're babysitting someone and they're going to sleep and you want to read them like a little children's story, this is actually this is actually good something you would want to read to them. Uh, or if, or if you're a little kid who wants to learn how to read, you can easily just show them this story and show them other stories like this. And um. Actually, I also like the idea because you know, with Kingdom Hearts out, you can easily you can easily factor the Winnie the Pooh as being something of this universal friendship bridge, uh, connecting all the Disney Disney worlds, say uh, of like Lilo Stitch, this one uh, Beauty and the Beast. You can easily you could easily throw the idea into Cinderella, into Mulan, of them just finding a book, going on, just hanging out with the Pooh friends, going. Not even going on an adventure, just talking and just and just the way this is right. It just it's just it's an actual good idea that actually has merit with with the idea itself of just simple uh, children's like book. Uh, I I just realized I'm going myself. I'm going in circles. So I guess I should end the story. I should end the review. Uh, so my final thoughts on the story on a scale of one to five, I, I I would have to give it a three out of five. I mean it's I mean it's it's good enough to get rid of not make it like lower than three, but it's a children's story. It's not my taste personally, so I can't give it anything higher than a three. I have to give it smack down in the middle because it's just a harmless little story. It's not it's not amazing it's not it's not bad it's not good it's just there it's just a simple down home story and that's my review if you have your own if you have your own if you have your own thoughts on the story then leave it in the comments if you and but that would be it so that's my thoughts it has been i like to thank you <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself there. This has been Dark Symphony 777. I thank you, my loyal readers, and...